welcome back and in this video i want to walk you through how i storyboard my animation in clip studio paint and why you should too so storyboarding is one of the most critical parts of the entire animation process right after the script and you can say that this is where the story will first come to life visually and then you know after the storyboard you will then move on to the animatic where you will start to finalize timing and so on so when storyboarding your drawings don't necessarily have to be the best but it's good to ensure that it's thoroughly planned out in terms of you know the story progression composition and framing camera movements camera angles and so on So this is the storyboard for Smile, the animated short film that I've been working on for a good while now. And this animation will be a mixture of both 3D environments and 2D character animation. So for the storyboard, I wanted to have at least a rough version of the 3D environments done in Cinema 4D. And then you know, which I will then draw the 2D characters on top of in Clip Studio Paint. And if you look closely, you will realize that the backgrounds are rendered with a black outline, you know, just for the purpose of the storyboard. And to show you how I did this, we'll jump into Cinema 4D. And from here, you'll go to Render Settings. You'll select Effects, Sketch and Tools. You'll select Outlines, you know, because that's what we want. Then in the Shading tab, we want everything to be white. So we'll select Custom Color. It will create a material and we can go into that and select distance, play with the thickness and the range and then place the material on the object that you know we want to have the outlines and then hit render and you'll get something like this. Now for the grayscale render, I use the redshift and these are my settings. And then from here, you just basically render this out. Then now in Clip Studio Paint, we want to import both renders with the outlines on top, and then change the blending mode to multiply. You can also play with the opacity of the grayscale render. And that's it. So now to create the actual storyboard. And to do this, the first thing you'll need are storyboard panels and here is a template that I created inspired by KD sketch and you'll have it free to download in the description. So now that the backgrounds are in Clip Studio Paint, I will just start to draw my characters for each shot, then arrange them in the panels based on the you know the progression of the story. So ensure that each character and props were on their own layer so that when doing camera movements for the animatic. For example, these arrows signify that the camera will dally are moving closer on the character. And having them on their own layers will help to give off a parallax effect like what we see here. And one last thing that I think I should mention are the vector layers in Quick Studio Paint. So I might be wrong, but I don't think I've ever come across any software that allows you to use vectors as smooth and as fluid as you would use rasters. And this tool right here gives you a lot of settings that you can play it. So a control point, this basically allows you to adjust each point of the vector stroke. Then you have the pinch vector line which gives you a brush that allows you to basically adjust the stroke however you want. Then the simplify vector line, as the name says, it simplifies each vector stroke that is made to your liking. Then you have connect vector line. And this basically, as the name says, connects a gap you know, between two lines. And the adjust line width allows you to edit each stroke, whether you want it to be thicker or you want it to be more narrow. 
and there's also a few more settings that you can explore on your own but I just thought it was something worth mentioning because the vector layers are what I use to draw the characters for this storyboard so now that both the backgrounds and the characters are finished I will just move on to arranging them in the storyboard panels based on the progression of the story I would also add in the notes for each shot and the camera symbols that would signify the camera movements that will be done for each shot. So the next thing that I'll be moving on to is creating the animatic or at least the first draft of the animatic which we can then use to get an idea of the timing of the animation and also how we would transition from each shot. Yeah, so I can look forward to seeing that and I hope this video is helpful and yeah, see you in the next one.